When I got to know him, uh, it was still under construction. It was not completely ready. On the inauguration day, in the morning, is when my you know car comes there, and then I see this huge, beautiful thing. And the first thing I tell him is, "We have created another Taj Mahal." How much did it cost to set up this complete home? The biggest cost, without a doubt, would be the land. We are talking around twenty thousand square feet here, twenty-five thousand square feet. Okay. Maybe around two and a half crores or something, if I recall right. That's because the land. Land cost, okay? okay? And the building cost is probably around uh, two-thirds of that. Understood. Okay. So all in all, we can say approximately 3.3 odd crores or something. Yeah, you could say that. But that was around, I'm, I'm talking around seven years ago, right? What would be the current value of this this building? I think maybe around 20 CR. Okay. Which, which we are talking about six to seven X. See, most people look upon architecture as a frill, as an expense. Okay. On the other hand, if it is well, a building is well designed, it can actually enhance the value of the property. Okay. It can actually be an asset, an investment. In the recent past, I've also started uh, acquiring uh, Rolex watches. Okay. That's a very, very different asset class which we have come across. We've mm. talked to so many people, mm. but uh, probably this is the first time we have heard that someone... Um, sort of invest in watches. Yes. Uh, you know. Exactly. That too, again, I, I'm not a, any any in every watch. Okay. Uh, maybe a handful of, two, or maybe two or three brands of Patek Philippe or... Uh, or Magic, yeah. For example, the uh, uh, Daytona, which I bought, it's a Rolex Daytona, which is one of the most desired Rolexes, which I bought yesterday. The guy who, who had sold it to me, he bought it in 2022 or something for just 10 lakhs last year. Okay. And I bought it for 20 years this year. By the by the way, this this has a graph. In twenty twenty, for example, the data had gone up to forty lakhs. Okay, I'm talking. The, I'm talking the second and use pre owned. In fact, the peculiar thing where the pre owned market rates are much more than the new rates. Okay, but there are Daytonas depending on the model, which have even in auction gone for over a crore. Not that my my model mine is a comparably pla comparably plain vanilla model. Okay, but even that, I'd rather plain vanilla model is more liquid. It's there's always a trade-off, right? Anything finance is always a trade-off, right? Okay, it's more liquid, so it means I'd be able, easily able to dispose it off. But is it that liquid that if tomorrow you need money, would you be able to liquidate it? Not like a stock, but something like easier than real estate, certainly. I was born and brought up abroad, but I came to India to study at IIT. When I started working with somebody, I was getting well in less than five figures. But after doing it for a couple of years, I realized, boss. If I continue like this for another few years, I will become an old uncle before I know it. You know, unknown, poor. So I decided to quit. I had no projects. I had no money. And I had no idea what I'm going to do next. But so as to get some kind of stability in my life, I took up a job as a part-time teacher. Ironically, teachers not themselves paid very well. But I was still getting more as a part-time teacher than I was getting as a full-time architect. I felt like a prince, man. Not bad. I mean, I'm working only part-time. I'm getting made more than what I was getting as full-time. And I loved it. I did that for the next one year. Then my mother, as part of my inheritance, she gave me 2 lakh rupees. 20 years ago, 2 lakh rupees is still some amount of money. It's equal to maybe like 10, 12 lakhs today. So with that 2 lakhs, I went to a builder, who today is a very big builder. That time he was not. Okay. Today he's called Embassy. With the money he, I had, he allowed me to buy a small unit. Okay. 350 square feet. That time, three or four of my students who had studied under me in the other institution walked in. They said, sir, uh, why don't you start your own institution? We will get your students. I said, where? They said, here. Why don't you get some more tables and chairs and maybe a drawing board or so, whatever. And you will get your students. More like out of a sense of obligation towards my students, I actually started. So at first year, I started with 13 students. But it was a fantastic experience. And and the thrills of being an entrepreneur was, was something else. How many students do you teach in a year as of now? 1,500 something. So for years, I used to drive a kinetic Honda for Christmas. I thought I I think uh, we should I should get a car. The Merc was like the what do you call what do you call it the go to among all luxury brands. And the Caligon is already three years old. I'm a terrible driver, so it is already beat up like crazy. So I try drive the bike into a scooter to Sundar Motors. Sundar Motors is a dealer for uh, Mercedes Benz in Bangalore, and I drive out with a Mercedes. And I left the Cantic Honda there. How much have you grown from then to now in terms of number of times? Maybe 100, 200, 1000, 2000? Yeah, probably 1000x. 
thousand X, and this is a journey of how many years? We can say like to be on the safer side, twenty odd years or so. Twenty plus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, what we want to make our viewers aware of is how you have so far been managing your finances. When I started off, the money that I would earn, I would invest in stocks. But let me just tell you frankly, <laughs> that is something just not my thing. My interest in stocks generated uh, started with my dad. Okay. When he passed away. The primary asset class that he had invested in was stocks. Okay. And we had the stocks of what is called Tata Motors. Now, at that time, it was called Telco and Disco. That is now it's called Tata Steel and things like that, Reliance and so on and so forth. But for me, those days at least seemed to be like Reliance, Tata's are very stodgy, too safe investments. Okay. So I would buy and I would sell, I would sell, I would buy. If I, if I made profit, most of it would go in capital gains. Okay. okay. If I made losses, well, I would have offset some of it with the capital gains. So finally, that of net, I made hardly anything much. So then what I started is, is investing in real estate. And bonds. Okay. Bonds g gave you, uh, a, let's say, a stability. And, and that's what is real estate one thing. And one good thing about at least the real estate part was that I would not have to look at the economic times or money control every day to find out where what, what the value is. Yeah. So that is what gives you peace of mind. That is a big deal. Right. Okay. And and because it's not so liquid, you don't liquidate it also. Correct. On the real estate side, do you do you buy uh, land more or do you invest in commercial properties or residential properties? The only mm. real asset class that in, in real estate that actually appreciates well, if you choose wisely, is land. But lands are, are a peculiar uh, asset class. You, know, you must understand this. You could buy today, but next five years, nothing could happen. Okay. It could just mean nothing is going to happen. If that happened in stocks, you would have sold the stock next year itself. Okay. Next day probably. But in land, you don't mind. Because lands happen and these cycles, it happens cycles and these cycles happen sharp spikes. Right. When it booms, it booms big. Then it plateaus for a while. And then there may be some cases as a short correction. So how much of your total portfolio as a percentage would be real estate, uh, watches and bonds? If you look at the amount of money I put in all together, I probably would have put 50% in shares, 30% in real estate, okay, and 20% in all other asset classes, which means bonds and uh, watches and other things. But the 50% in shares didn't work out at all. Okay. The 30 percent which I put in real estate is one which God willing, which I want, which if I want to sell, okay, will help me. Okay. Now recently I've started re uh, reinvesting in shares, but the shares I'm buying are Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, Google. And uh, Microsoft. Okay. And uh, two or three Indian stocks also. So uh, I'm, I'm hitching my wagon on that. Reason being very simple. Because rupee depreciates every year against the dollar. The dollar. Yeah. So even if you do nothing, even if I just keep dollars, you end up making money. You end up making money. 7% nearly risk free. So is it correct to say that approximately 70 or percentage of your current portfolio is real estate? Yes, fair. Yeah, in terms, in terms, not in terms of. Uh, no, money I put in, yeah. What of the value? Net value today, right, exactly. Not the amount of money you put in real estate? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes, yes. Okay, perfect. See, beyond your daily expense, when I say daily expense, I don't mean just food and drink only. Daily expense can mean even buying a car. I mean, let's let's suppose, okay. All the financial investments are securities. And God willing, you'll never need to use it. But like in older days, you would buy gold. But you rarely sell gold unless you have to. And you know, it's only when you have a strong foundation that you can actually venture out and do other things. When you think of security in the long term, what comes to anyone's mind is once you're secure, once you have good enough money or assets to take care of yourself and your family, you can retire. So how much of all of this which you've done, you've kept that retirement planning at the back of your head? Do I plan to retire? No. Okay. I want to die with the boots on when I'm 110. Okay. Still doing great stuff. The way I see it, I'm just starting. I swear. My wife and I, we've traveled world, the world. I have been on expeditions to Antarctica. Okay. I've been on safaris to Africa. I was there for the Qatar World Cup final when Messi and, and Argentina won that World Cup. I was fashion designer to Miss India, Femina Miss India, in 2018. I also do artwork which I have exhibited at Miami, Art Basel Miami, at Victoria and Albert Museum, at Alliance Francaise. Okay, so I do that too. Okay. The thing which I, which, which 
I don't speak much about is one where I have at the least recognition, but it's probably the thing I spend most amount of time and passion on. It's on my writing. Okay. I've written some fourteen books, fiction and non-fiction. Fourteen. One four. Yes. Okay. So a lot of things, and that is happening while at the same time, the investments in real estate is happening. The same time, uh, the college is running. The same time I do architecture, all these things happening simultaneously. So basically, everything on my bucket list is already done. So unlike others who end up doing everything to retire, you are doing everything so that you do not retire. Yeah, precisely. The mistake a lot of people make is that they want all these streams to be one big streams. That's a much mistake. There are some things you must do for your soul, something do for your wallet, something do for your heart. Everything can't be doing it only for one thing in life only, right? <laughs>